friends from Indonesia to uh, this evening's event in, in the symposium uh, with, under the title Austria and Indonesia Perspectives of Freedom of Religion. Uh, thank you, Professor Oppet. Ladies and gentlemen, dear panelists, uh, Salamat Siang, Salamat Sore, Papa Papa, Dani Hui Hu. This is to welcome you uh, wholeheartedly on behalf of the Minister of External Affairs. We are very happy to host this seminar. It is part of a series of similar events which have been initiated already some years ago with Indonesia but also with uh, ASEAN in general. In Indonesia's recent history, the nation state has been challenged twice by the idea of the establishment of an Islamic caliphate in the 1940s by Darul Islam and after the fall of the Suharto order after 1997. The Austro-Hungarian monarchy, on the other hand, struggled for a constitution which would be able <coughs> to accommodate multi-ethnicity and religious pluralism during most of the 19th century. And during a passing, Papa Papa Dani Guigo. About pluralism, there is a <coughs> discussion going on, both in Indonesia in general and among Muslims, which I do not have to explain. Professor Azumardi can do it, but I have a doctorandus who also teaches Islam in my place. He is one of the most well-known pluralists in Indonesia, Bimuna Barachman. Now, in 2005, the Majlis Ulama Indonesia, MUI, uh, gave a fatwa uh, outlawing liberalism, secularism, and pluralism. When I talk with Muslim, often, we on, always agree on things which I formulate in this way, Islam and Christianity have many things together, but there are essential differences we will not overcome and we have to accept it and uh, we leave it to God how to solve the problems. It's not our task and this is this kind of pluralism which accept that the other religions is easy in Indonesia, especially with mainstream Muslims, is no problem. Of course, constitutionally speaking, uh, Indonesia recognized pluralism as reflected by the one of the four uh, basic principles of Indonesian state, that is Bineka Tundalika. Uh, diversity within unity. Bineka Tundalika. Diversity within unity. Uh, the, the three other principles of Indonesian nation state is uh, the uh, 1945 national constitution, the Pancasila five principles as the basis of Indonesian state rather than any religion. Pancasila is the, con the, uh, the confessional ideology of the confessional basis of the state. Uh, and, um, and the fourth, of course, uh, the Bineka Tungalika. The, uh, the, the third is unitary state of Indonesia, and the fourth is uh, diversity within unity. This is um, at, the implement, uh, at, the, at the implementation level, talk about the freedom of worship. And if you're talking about the freedom of worship, the state has uh, provided, has provided uh, the, uh, all the religious communities in Indonesia with their own, um, uh, with their own national holidays, for example, all Muslim holidays, or Christian holidays, Buddhism, Hinduism holidays, and also, yeah, including Chinese, uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese New Year as the holidays of the Confucianism. Uh, the government do not give the permit. But sometimes also this happened because of the, again and again we are talking about 
what Professor Asha are talking about, some prejudices, suspiciousness. Always, again and again, in the discourse between Islamic da'wah and on the other side, Christian missions <coughs> and all these things. So uh, I would like to put uh, these points on the table uh, to be more, uh, to be further discussed in, in this panel discussion. Thank you. Uh, religious pluralism in the European context is uh, more or less a result of the fact that religion has lost its absolutistic uh, claim for truth, etc., etc. So uh, we are tolerant because in our uh, uh, countries uh, religion more or less uh, is not as strong as uh, some uh, centuries uh, ago. So it is, uh, sarcastically speaking, it is some easier to be tolerant uh, if you are agnostic or skeptic uh, with regard uh, to religion. And that may be the real aspect uh, of uh, the image from outside that Europe is uh, to some extent a continent of atheism. Yeah? I think this is a, a very different uh, situation uh, that we have something like uh, religion light. Yeah? Our Christian majority in Protestantism and <coughs> Catholicism we had in uh, the, the Protestant, Protestant, like in Germany, uh, this is very carnivalesque, there are a lot of discussion and multiculturalism, it is uh, full of happiness, uh, but it's quite clear that it's open uh, because uh, they, they celebrate something uh, I would call uh, religion. The third point is religion, is religion is not a simple but a complex phenomenon. It entails such different phenomena as myth. Dogma, right, mystic feeling, a system of values, and an institution that has <laughs> symbolic but also real power. And I think this is a permanent uh, discussion in our country. And uh, I would add one question that uh, has not been mentioned, but still uh, I think we do come across it now and again. How much religious freedom do we have for those who deny religious freedoms to others? Only the last one, yeah, religious freedom for deniers of religious freedom, maybe freedom for deniers of religious freedom, as uh, that the same freedom for uh, people threatening democracy. This is a real problem. I mean, we don't have to, uh, uh, the religious freedom of deniers of religious freedom is, I think, no problem. They have this freedom. But uh, how far do we give them uh, free hands? And I personally think uh, of a country like Indonesia, it is also very important to draw the line against uh, threats towards democracy. Democracy understood as a packet uh, parcel together with human rights and freedom of religion. And especially the duty, there's a duty of the state uh, to suppress all kinds of Violence. Uh, if you condemn a certain group of uh, the believers as being deviant, deviant from mainstream, and then uh, and then they would, I think, in, in most cases, they will consolidate themselves, and then they will uh, have more distance. Yeah? They will. Uh, make their own distance from uh, the, the original religion. So I think dialogue, dialogue, and dialogue, that's the key. Yeah. And uh, we've been really trying to really work on this dialogue. But of course, some tensions happen. And this is, uh, we would like to say that this is, of course, uh, big agendas, not only for Christians, but for all religions who, who live in this country, who are really 
hoping to, um, to, to get a better atmosphere of mutual respect and peaceful coexistence one to the other. You mentioned that, uh, to some extent, in, in uh, many uh, religious, uh, interreligious dialogue, uh, there is a focus on the humanistic uh, values and ideas of every religion. Uh, I think also on Hans Küng's idea of that, it was, that may be right, but on the other hand, religion can be uh, a dangerous instrument if it is connected with political, ethnical, social or economic conflicts because of the emotional uh, aspect in religion. I mentioned that religion is a complex phenomenon. It includes a very emotional uh, aspect. And if you instrumentalize this emotional aspect, uh, you really uh, hate the Muslim or you really hate uh, the Sikh or, uh, 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 in that way. So the emotional is a very dangerous uh, resource. For the first time after 26 years, we are Muslim and how we experience must become Muslim as a minority here in Europe. And in some extent, I can also want to share that, yes, the tension is, exists, but it is more driven by, let's say, political, economical, and social motive rather than the religious motive itself. So what do you think about, 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 about this, this, this opinion? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I would like to know which are the most important tensions, the means, the obstacles for a pluri, plur, plur, pluralistic way of religion in, in Indonesia today. Is it the Muslim community? Is this, this uh, a new approach of being fundamental? Is there any kind of uh, illegal religious practice? What is the most urgent problem and what is the best Solution you have found to now. Thank you uh, for that. And if the political will, and to refer to your question about the role of the media, this includes also the media. <coughs> the media do not show a kind of willingness, out of which reasons whatsoever, very often it's economic motivated, but I don't know if this is really the only motivation. I think that uh, this really needs to be there, otherwise, it doesn't work. I mean, you have to acknowledge each other and there must be also a kind of authority which gives you a kind of reference that it, it might be good to do that. So I just would like to really emphasize the role of the government. My question actually is very simple. I would like to focus on the subject of sex which was mentioned. Um, what are the inroads that have been made by the Wahhabi? in Indonesia and uh, corollary to that I would like to ask uh, how have the mainstream uh, uh, religious uh, groups in Indonesia reacted to this in between religions but what about the pluralism in your own religion this is a very important question for Indonesia I think uh, if we look back to the recent history about the incident uh, in Western Java concerning the Ahmadiyya. The mosque was, mosque was destroyed and many people killed in front of the police. Uh, how many uh, ethnic groups are in Indonesia? How many, for instance, Chinese, Balinese, Bata, uh, Gorasha uh, are there? And we could not get a detailed statistic because the last census on ethnic issues was in 1930. Thank you very much. This was the last word. I say thank you not only to the four panelists, also to the audience who brought in some interesting questions to the organizers. I seems to have a very